I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. Today we're going to talk about per preset foot switches on the FC controllers. I've got my Axe FX3 and FC12 hooked up at the moment. Before we talk about any of that though, I've got the Dirty Shirley model dialed up with this LT TV Mix 2 cabinet that you can get for free from the Axe website. And I have a little bit of the London Plate reverb. There's a bunch of other effects blocks sitting in this preset, but this is the core tone. It is nice and crunchy. <laughs> Alrighty, that is what I like, especially this Dirty Shirley model. I've been playing around with it a little bit lately and it is wonderful for that sort of thing, like an idealized Marshall. It's definitely got a little bit of the ACDC vibe that I think is essential with a tone like that. Okay, we're not really here to talk about the amp tone specifically though, I want to talk about functionality. So let's do this. Uh, if you want to play along, you can sacrifice one of your layouts on your FC12. I've gone ahead and blanked out a layout called per preset. Now all of this will apply to the FC6 controller as well if you don't have an FC12. But at the moment, I have totally blanked out this layout. And the idea with per preset switches and the reason I like to dedicate a whole layout to them is that I have layouts for scenes, effects, I have a perform layout, a control switch layout, uh, things that I would consider I would use on every single preset. But my per preset layout, I use just to bake in all those little quirks that I might want in a particular preset. For example, if I have a block that I don't use very often, or if I have a control switch assigned to a function, I like to have them in my per preset layout. And it also means that if I'm doing, say, different gigs, one where I have to go and do like an R&B gig where I might need a bunch of blocks like a compressor and a phaser and an envelope filter. Uh, I might not need those on, say, my hard rock gig where I just need a bunch of drives and delays. It's nice to have kind of the primary things I need at my feet at all times with a per preset layout. So as you can see, I have blanked this layout completely. What we're going to do is just go to each foot switch and I'm going to assign a per preset foot switch there. So you can see here, the function at the moment is a placeholder and it just says per preset number one. It actually hasn't assigned anything there. So I'm gonna go through and assign per preset number two to the second foot switch. Uh, so we could just click here and select that one there. You can see there's 24 available per preset foot switches. Uh, you get the idea right here, we'll do number three on this switch. Not too interesting just yet. This is just set up if you want to play along. And thanks to the magic of television, I'm going to go through and assign all of these and not talk you through all 12. That was nice and fast. You can see that foot switch number 12, I have assigned to per preset number 12. I'm fairly sure one of the stock layouts works like this. So you may not even need to go through. I just thought this would be handy to illustrate this uh, so that the rest of this makes sense. You can see on my FC12, each button just reads the per preset number. So at the moment, nothing's happening. And the idea with the per preset switches is if we actually want to assign these now, we have to go up here in Axe Edit and go to the per preset function. So let's start with per preset number one. That is going to be assigned to my bottom left foot switch on my FC12. Let's do something fairly straightforward. I'm going to assign an effect to that foot switch. You can see the button now lights up. And I mean, I always use delay in most of my presets. So let's set this as the delay block. Very straightforward, exactly the same way you would assign a foot switch normally in a layout. But the catch is it's not going to apply all presets now, it's only this one preset, hence the term per preset. If I look at my FC controller now, you can see down here that it tells me the function is delay one on the FC, it's saying delay one as well. Now, I've got plenty of blocks in here. So what I could do is if I wanted to say assign the flanger to switch two and the multi delays to switch three and four, I can do that. I need to go to my per preset menu over here and let's assign these per preset functions as effects. So I said flanger for this one. Let's do that. And I said multi delay for these. And I can, of course, do all the things I would normally do with layouts like assign different colors or, you know, have tap and hold functions on there as well. So there's multi delay one and we will put multi tap delay two over here. 
I'm going to assign a few utilities in a second. But first, I want my multi delays to be different colors. And I want these switches to be different colors as well, just because uh, that helps a lot for me on stage, I have found. So uh, going back over to my FC controllers menu over here, you can see uh, they're still all placeholders. But on my FC 12, now I have dedicated buttons there. For example, if I want to turn uh, the delay on and then the flanger on, it works exactly the way you would expect. <laughs> So I've gone through and completed this per preset layout so that I have 12 functions. My bottom row is essentially a bunch of different effects blocks, which are specific to this particular preset. That differs from my main effects layout. Uh, normally my main effects layout, I always have, you know, like drive, delay, multi-delay, reverb. They're always in the same place. In this particular preset, I want access to some slightly different functions on that bottom row of switches. So I've gone and assigned those effects the way I like them. There's also some utilities assigned like the amp channel select, which is really handy if you want to use multiple amps in a particular preset, but not change scenes. I've also got two control switches here. This particular control switch is assigned to the bypass state of these two compressor blocks, which kind of emulate that solo Dallas Schaefer trick. So I can turn them both on at the same time. <laughs> Tap tempo and the tuner are very important to me. I normally have those there in just about every layout anyway, so it's nice to be consistent there. And then one great utility function is this ability to increase the level of the amp block. If we have a look on the per preset page over here, you can see utility, amp level, and save, and is gonna target amp block number one and just increase the level by one dB and then save the patch, which is very handy indeed. Let's have a listen to what that can do. <laughs> So now I've got a saved preset with the amp block level where I like it and basically everything that I need at my fingertips. What I'm going to do is change over to a different preset where I have totally different per preset foot switches assigned. This is something I would use for my main live preset with the FC12. Let's take a look at my main live preset. You'll notice on the FC12 that the buttons are all assigned to different functions. I haven't changed layouts though. I've just changed the per preset assignment. So buttons one to five here are actually assigned to scenes because I mostly use scenes when I play live to change my tones. For example, I can go from my main rhythm sound to my lead sound to my rhythmic delay sound. <laughs> Very nice stuff indeed, but the way I use a live preset is I like to have those core sounds and then have the ability to basically chuck some extra effects or some extra flavors on top. And one way I like to do that is with a drive block. So switches seven, eight, and nine are all set to select different channels in the drive block. For example, if I select per preset switch number seven, that's assigned to engage my drive block on channel A, and I've given it a custom name called tight, it's actually going to engage the precision drive model over here. So even though this particular scene is by default saved with the octave distortion, when I press this button, it will engage the drive block and change it to the channel I want. <laughs> Now I've got this particular switch here, which is per preset switch number eight. You can see this is set to almost exactly the same function, but it is now going to engage the drive block and select channel B. I'll go over to the drive block so you can see that. So check this out. Now it's going to select a fuzz. <laughs> Where 
whereas that foot switch right there is engaging channel C of the drive block. So that's something that I normally kind of wouldn't have the real estate to do because I just, you know, by default, just kind of want one drive block. But in this live functionality, I want to be able to select those three different sounds whenever I want them on whatever scene I want them. So that's why I've assigned them up here. They're not something I would be using all the time. I would be relying on scenes, which again is why I've prioritized scenes on the bottom row right there. And then I have a couple of extra functions assigned here with custom names. These two are control switches. This particular control switch here is attached to the boost function in the amp block. So I've called it boost with a cu custom name. And then this one's interesting right here. Uh, control switch number three, I've set as a momentary control switch and I've assigned it to the control parameter in the wire block. Furthermore, I've set the attack and release to 150 milliseconds. So I can use this, uh, I can kind of, I think of it as like applying pressure, even though it's not pressure sensitive. And the longer I hold it, the further it's gonna sweep up the wire. This is a really cool alternative to using an expression pedal. <laughs> You can see the way that works right there. I really like the workflow having this per preset layout set up. One additional advantage is let's say I didn't want to use this particular layout. I wanted to go to my standard effects layout. So I can use the combo mode there by pressing those far right foot switches together and access the master layout menu. Let's go say to my scenes layout over here. So I've got this set up for scene one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I then have these foot switches by default set up to go to my effects layout or the looper, I've got tuner and tap tempo. This is a layout that applies to every single preset. Let's say though that in this particular preset, I know I'm not gonna use scene eight. So I wanna get rid of that button and maybe replace it with that control switch wah thing. So Here's how we do that. I remember that that was per preset number 12. What I can do is go over to my FC controllers over here. This is my scenes layout and I wanna replace this button right here. If I went here and changed this function to control switch number three, that is gonna change the function of that foot switch on that layout on every preset. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna do it on this one preset. So let's go per preset override and select per preset number 12. You can see we get this warning message right here, but on my FC12, now I have access to that wire function. So if you can understand how per preset controls work and how the per preset placeholder buttons work, then overrides are kind of a consequence of that particular process. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I'm gonna play you all out with this uh, particular layout right here where I've got my favorite lead sound and I've got access to that wah. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all next Tuesday for another Tuesday Tone Tip. <laughs>